Hey, welcome back. It's another episode of Flood Geology Failures. This time, we're going to ask the question, can human footprints made in wet sand dunes be preserved as fossils? Yep, we're going to continue with this series on fossil footprints, this time specifically looking at human or hominid uh, fossil footprints. And the place we're going to visit is a small coastal cave in South Africa. The discovery of up to 35 human footprints on the roof of this small cave says, yes, indeed, human footprints made in wet sand dunes can be preserved as fossils. Let's take a look at that coming right up. Footprints on the roof of a cave? How does that happen? I wondered that too when I first heard about this remarkable discovery. The footprints were identified by an amateur paleontologist from Canada. He was visiting South Africa, walking along the coast, looking in these caves. He was actually searching for fossils in something called an aeolianite, which is just a fancy term for fossil dune, right along the coast in southern South Africa. He'd already identified footprints from a dozen other species of animals, including lions and elephants and horses, all preserved in ancient sand dunes. But these human footprints were an especially exciting discovery. They're found in a small cave carved out by the high tides in the soft sandstones of a fossilized sand dune. You're looking at it right now. I know, it's not a lot to look at. It's a very small cave, just a shallow depression in the side of this uh, sandstone hill. The footprints must have originally been made on the surface of what was a wet dune. When the sand dried, wind-borne sand then covered up those prints. Interestingly, the footprints are also found in two distinct layers of sandstone, suggesting two temporally isolated track-making events, right? Two separate times in which humans walked on wet dunes, separated by some period of time, that time being the time in which the sand was deposited in between. You can see these really nice layers of, se uh, of sediments. Um, deposited in this ancient sand dune. Furthermore, in the very same cave where these human footprints were found on the surface, uh, sorry, on the ceiling, there are carnivore tracks on the floor of the cave. So how did these tracks get there? The location where these tracks are found is, is really quite peculiar. Not only are they found in the roof of a cave, but you can see there's dozens of feet, all right? Many, many layers of sandstone on top of this cave. This sandstone is the fossilized remains of a ancient sand dune. We can infer from the evidence gathered at this fossil site a likely sequence of historical events to explain the origin of these tracks and their present condition. It would go something like this. At one time, this specific site was a lot farther from the seashore. Today, it's just a few hundred feet from the ocean. A large dune field stretching hundreds of miles along the southern tip of Africa was present in the past. At one particular dune, the one we're interested in right here. A large carnivore walked over, leaving tracks in the wet sand. Those were preserved after drying out when more sand was deposited on top of them. After many new layers of sand had been deposited, the same process was repeated two more times, but this time more likely it was a modern human being who walked whose footprints are preserved in the wet sand. After these tracks were covered by sand themselves, the dune continued to grow with dozens of feet of new layers deposited upon it. At some point, the environment must have changed and the dune field was converted into a landscape covered with vegetation. During this time, sand continued to bury this entire landscape under a new layer of sediments that I'll show you in just a moment. And as that occurred and water percolated down through these ancient sand dunes, they began to cement together to form sandstone. Then the ocean levels rose and it began to erode away what is now a thick layer of sandstone that had been this ancient dune field. Not too long ago, maybe tens to hundreds of years, our fossil dune of interest was finally eroded at the high tide, allowing for the layers of sediment that preserve these fossil footprints to appear on the roof of the cave while also exposing the carnivore tracks on the floor of the cave. Based on previous studies of the geology of this region, the authors of the article describing the tracks believe the tracks to be about 90,000 years old. 
If they're correct, all the events described above would have to have occurred during this very short geological time frame. Well, 90,000 years doesn't sound short to a young Earth creationist, but to an old Earth creationist or a, uh, a person who believes the world is hundreds of millions of years old, 90,000 is a very short period of time. However, as rapid as this might seem, given our current understanding of geology, these events must have occurred at least 10 times as quickly as young Earth creationists might perceive them to have. This is just another long line in puzzling fossils for young Earth creationists. Yet again, these footprints are in places where young Earth creationists might not expect to find them. Even in the young Earth creationist highly shortened chronology of Earth's history, these sand dunes did not form until after a global flood, just 4,350 years ago. How did people migrate all the way down to the tip of South Africa so quickly, after being divided at the Tower of Babel? They had to leave their footprints. They had to be covered up by many more layers, only to form an entire new ecosystem on top of those dunes, which then had to be eroded by the ocean to reveal the ancient dunes underneath. Right. Looking at this picture, this is actually a picture of the South African coastline in the very area where this uh, dune uh, cave was found. And so what you're, what you're looking at here is these rocks down here. It's kind of reminiscent of the, uh, the uh, features found in, say, maybe near Moab, Utah, where there's lots of fossilized dunes there as well. And so all of this rock here are dunes. Um, that are sandstone dunes. And then those sandstone dunes were covered with another 50 feet or so of sediment, right? And then a forest is growing on top of that. So after the dune field formed, and this dune field, there are areas out in the ocean where there's little islands, and you can see they're also made of these dune fields, fossilized dune fields, that are then, of course, sitting on tens of thousands of feet of other sediments, right? But these dune fields, um, would have formed in the young earth creationist model, in the flood geology model, as something that occurred after the flood. All right, not going to have wind blown sand dunes near the surface of the earth uh, in the middle of a flood, right? This has to be something that's a post flood, uh, a, a post flood feature. And therefore, a cave inside of these fossil fields has to be a post flood feature as well, which is how we know this must be human beings from after the flood that made these fossil footprints, all right, or made these footprints that then are fossilized. So going back to all the layer of sediment laying on top of the sand dunes. So you have the sand dunes, you have then additional sediments being deposited on top of the sand dunes from higher elevation hills and mountains in the surrounding area. And then you have the ocean eating away because this all would have been extended out towards you, right? All of this has at one time was covered with sediments about you know 50 to 60 feet high. And so all of this has been eroding and then exposing, exposing the fossilized sand dunes. And now the ocean is eating away right at the, at the edge uh, or carving away into the fossil sand dunes. And finally carved into this particular rock where we see these fossil footprints. Now, I mentioned earlier that the person who found these fossil footprints had also already found dozens of other sites where there are fossil footprints. Um, there's many footprints in these sand dunes, illustrating that <laughs> fossil footprints can be made, right, just on sand dunes themselves, which is which would seem really difficult to do. So it goes back to a previous video where I talked about it's kind of like winning the lottery. I mean, obviously, most footprints are never going to be preserved. But if you have hundreds of thousands of years and hundreds of billions and trillions of attempts, some of them will be preserved. And those are the ones that we're seeing today. Okay, so we've got this very interesting and I think very challenging location for young earth creationists to explain because they have to try to squeeze all of these events into a post-flood world, which means they have to be squeezed into the last 4,300 years. So despite suggestions to the contrary, this discovery should provide compelling reasons to believe that fossilization of footprints can happen without what? A global catastrophe, right? After all, there are human footprints found in numerous locations in the world that all young Earth creationists recognize that all of these have been formed after a global flood. Hence, they must admit that fossils can be preserved in local context, non-global flood context. 
There's no doubt that the preservation of footprints, just like all of other fossils, is a very rare event and does not require a fortuitous, for a paleontologist at least, set of circumstances to occur. This discovery of footprints in fossil sand dunes is a snapshot of one of those rare events. These footprints were formed in just the right place and time to be preserved in a very small scale event. A wet morning, person walking on that particular sand dune, maybe in search of food, drying of the sand dune, and then the wind kicking up more sand, covering those footprints that are preserved in the sand. This is not unlike what we see in tens of thousands of other locations where footprints of many organisms are found. A flood, let alone a global one, is not required to produce footprints, and the context of footprints frequently excludes such an event, or is at best neutral with respect to the extent of the event that caused the preservation of footprints. I forgot to show, this is a picture of, the, of, of a scan of the roof of this particular cave showing the depressions of the foot, because of course this person didn't put their feet up inside a cave, right? They walked over a sand dune and they compressed the sand and then that compression then pushed down into the sand layer that was below it. And so now that it's eroded, you see these little, the, the bottoms of the feet basically on the surface of the, sorry, the, the roof of the cave. As a bit of an addendum to this simple, short example of South Africa and human footprints, I just want to point out that innumerable Facebook commenters and personal conversations I've had with young Earth creationists, I've been assured that footprints can't be preserved as fossils, at least not by any ordinary process today. At an Answers in Genesis conference I attended, a speaker just stood and mocked the idea that footprints of fossils could be, I'm sorry, footprints of dinosaurs could be preserved by conventional geological methods. They pointed out it would be silly to think that footprints on a beach or even a muddy lake edge would last long enough to harden into rock and be preserved. Unfortunately, these speakers are usually not experts and are overgeneralizing to try to influence their geologically naive audience. They create a footprint problem, they call it, that doesn't really exist, but it allows them to provide what? A better solution, a global flood. This idea that footprints aren't expected to be found in the fossil record is even promoted by top young earth creationist geologist, Dr. Andrew Snelling in Answers in Genesis. Here is a direct quote in which Andrew Snelling addresses dinosaur footprints. He says, Biblical geologists, on the other hand, say it is the conventional geologist, in fact, who face a dilemma. If geological change takes place slowly, surely footprints made in mud would be obliterated by wind and, and rain long before the prints were covered by new sediments and hardened into rock. You see, Dr. Snelling is perfectly willing to allow his audience to believe that conventional geology has no explanation for fossilized footprints, even though he knows that many footprints can be and are preserved under conditions which we observe today. He makes what sounds like an obvious point. I mean, who would deny that if you walked around, you wouldn't really have an expectation that your footprints are going to become fossilized? Do you expect that you'll be able to, somebody will find one of your footprints 10,000 years from now? Probably not. Dr. Snelling and other young earth creationist speakers take this common knowledge, this common feeling of their audience, and then shows long, they show long sets of dinosaur tracks and then ask, how could these possibly be preserved? The answer they say is found in the Noahic global flood, in which cataclysmic waves of sediments immediately covered the tracks of these animals, preserving them in the rock record, even though they offer no specifics as to how this might occur. Young earth creationists believe that special circumstances are required to explain footprints, but since they believe that all or nearly all of them were produced in the span of one year during a global flood, the huge number of prints contained in the rock record require that a large percentage of all the footprints made by any animals running around trying to escape the flood, they all had to be preserved. That's an extraordinarily optimistic scenario, which is not at all supported by the relatively slow pacing evident in most fossil trackways. And things like impression depth, the amount of contact between ground, the, the ground and the foot, the seeming random direction of the trackways, and the amount of direction of material displaced with each step. In other words, we can tell if an animal is running and scared and, and doing crazy things. 
In an ancient Earth scenario, only a few footprints of the millions made by a single individual of population and millions of individuals need to be preserved every thousand years or so to account for the observed footprints we find in the rock record. As we said in a previous video, even if only 0.0000001% of all footprints left by dinosaurs, mammals, and humans were ever preserved, we would expect the geological record would contain billions of footprints. And you know what? It does. So back to the South African cave very quickly. This sandstone is not the product of a global flood. This is very young rock, which by every young earth creationist accounting of where the flood ended and the post-flood world began, it exists in a post-flood world. So they must squeeze the entire history of this rock, the formation of this rock, and the footprints being in place in this post-flood world. So all these things that Dr. Snelling says and other young earth creationists say at conferences where they try to convince their audience that only a global flood could preserve fossil footprints the way we see them are all bogus because we have many examples of fossil footprints in rocks that young earth creationists acknowledge were not formed by a global flood. I don't know how many times I have to say that. I feel like it one time should be enough and yet I continue to hear young earth creationists, uh, including Ken Ham and others, constantly speak about footprints and fossilized footprints as if there was only one possible explanation for them. All right, I think that's it for this episode of Flood Geology Failures. Yeah, share this picture with a friend, a young earth creationist friend, and nicely ask them, how would you explain how these footprints got in this rock? Draw me up a scenario for that and see what they do with it. I think they're going to find it very challenging and it's a way to get them to think about um, their scenario for Earth's history. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.